Anyone who stands in the way of this woman's movement will not end up well wherever she goes. She wields her sword. Down scenes of strong men are no match for her. She slashed with her sword for hours without batting an eye. When she was thirsty, she drank water from a pool full of corpses and not worry about hygiene. I don't know how many people Yuki has fought off. Since Yuki eliminated three of her enemies, her enemies, henchmen and the police have been hunting her down. Yuki believes that revenge is the right thing to do. So she often resists arrest with violence. As a result, her life is also full of tension. Even when she eats and sleeps, she has to be careful not to be attacked. Today Yuki escaped the police once again. She was walking alone on the vast beach. There is still no shelter for her in the whole world. She had to find a place to rest for a while. Yuki accidentally got caught in a trap on her way to escape. Luckily, she was saved by a strange man. The man carefully treated Yuki's wound and then went to sleep. He didn't want to ask about Yuki's affairs. Yuki felt that this strange man had no purpose for her and fell asleep quietly. She woke up and found that the man had disappeared. Yuki looked at the blood on her hands and thought she would go to the river to wash it. But the police came after her again. Yuki had to resist arrest with violence again. She looked at the souls of the dead who had fallen under the sword. Smelling the fishy smell of blood mixed with the sea breeze. Looking at the puzzled eyes of the man who had just returned, Yuki suddenly had doubts about her actions as well. She was born with a mission of revenge. Now that she had finished her revenge, there was no point in killing again. Every day, she just mechanically draws her sword and slashes, and then let each samurai fall under her sword. Her actions now only add to her sins. She was physically and mentally exhausted from her constant escapades. How comfortable she had been last night to sleep without fear. So she threw away her sword and waited to be arrested. Perhaps death is the best place for her. Yuki was finally sentenced to death for killing 37 people. On her way to the execution site, a pair of mysterious men suddenly appeared and saved her. Then Yuki was taken to a public house. Jack, the leader of the mysterious men, tells Yuki that he is a secret police officer of the government. He asks Yuki to help them spy on the terror spike and then go to Mike's house to steal a letter. If Yuki completes his mission, she can leave under a new identity. With a new purpose, Yuki is like a wild bee smelling its prey. Yuki has found a reason to live again. She accepts the secret mission in the end, regardless of whether the purpose is just or not. Mike is a radical writer. The government considers him to be an extremely dangerous person. And Mike also has some secret information between Jack and the government officials. Yuki has to use the identity of a maid to approach him. She feels someone is spying on her and picks up a scalpel and throws it at the ceiling. A few seconds later, a lot of blood flows down the scalpel. The man on the roof was pierced. He was in so much pain that he rolled straight from the roof to the floor. But all he wanted to do was to go back and tell the leader Jack that Yuki had gone rogue. Ever since Yuki came to Mike's house, she had admired Mike, a progressive who fought for the people and defied the power. One day Mike took Yuki to a cemetery and revealed Yuki's identity as Lady Snowblood and what she was up to. He even took out the secret document directly. This made Yuki very confused. If you know everything, why do you still keep me around? Mike told Yuki a story. The politicians wanted to achieve militarism so, they sent all the men to war. The remaining old and women and children became the source of their money. The rich and powerful lived a life of luxury. The people of the lower class were living a very hard life. The people could only beg some progressive people to give them their rights. But one laborer attacked the shopkeeper because he was dissatisfied with the oppression. Jack and the others in charge of the investigation forced the laborer to give false testimony in order to meet the needs of the politicians. He characterized the incident as an attempt to assassinate the emperor by all the progressives. So they started to attack the progressives and use their lives for promotion and money. Then Jack also made the laborers lose their breath. But before they died, the laborers wrote a letter to his mother about their plot. And this letter fell into Mike's hands. Yuki was now disgusted with Jack and the secret police. After her revenge, Yuki found a new purpose in life under Mike's inspiration. She felt that doing something for the people was the meaning of life. So Yuki became Mike's personal bodyguard. And Jack knew that Yuki would be ready to destroy them after her rebellion. Soon after, Jack's chance came. Yuki and Mike needed to go to a labor conference. Mike had a feeling that something might happen before he left. So he gave a letter to Yuki and instructed her to pass the letter to his brother Sam in case of trouble. As expected, the two of them are surrounded by the police on the road. The police finally knew how to use a gun this time. They arrested Mike for harboring a wanted criminal. While Yuki was shot, she dived into the water and escaped with injuries and went to the slum to look for Sam. 
Don't mess with any woman. This honest woman took out a hairpin and stabbed the police chief in one eye. There she was eliminated by the police. And this woman is Mike's wife. Mike was arrested and tortured every day. The police punished Yuki with boiling water. In order to find out where he took the letter, Yuki found Sam with a bruised and battered body. It turns out that Sam is the strange man who saved her life not long ago. Sam didn't want to rescue his big brother after knowing the reason. He said it was the decision of all Japanese politicians. A letter won't solve anything. Soon after, Mike's wife came to Sam to find a solution. Inside the house, Yuki sent someone on the roof. She shot a flying knife and hit the spy. It turns out that the spy was following Mike's wife. He was hit by Yuki and fell down. People swarmed around him and tied him up with chains. But this agent is really good. He cut off one of his arms at night and escaped from the ropes. After dawn, the agent returned again. He left Mike bruised and battered and left. Sam found many white spots on Mike's body when he was treating him. The cops were experimenting on Mike's body. Sam isolated him and Mike in the woodshed for safety treatment. Mike's wife stabbed the police chief in the eye to avenge Mike's death. After that, she was destroyed by the police who came. Mike also lost his breath after hearing the news of his wife's death. Finally, Sam cremated his brother and sister-in-law together. But God did not spare them. Sam was also infected with Mike's disease. So he locked himself in the house and asked Yuki to blackmail Jack with a letter to hand over a large amount of food and give it to the poor. He said that a letter will not change the reality, but let everyone eat first. Although Yuki was very sad about Mike's death, but she thought about what she had seen and heard in the slums in the past few days. The miserable life of the poor people here is shocking, so she agreed to Sam's proposal. Yuki finds Jack and the others and intends to trade that letter for goods to improve the living conditions of the people in the slums. Jack seems to agree to Yuki's deal. In fact, Jack himself led a team to burn down the slums. In this way, the letter and the people will no longer be a problem. Eventually, the slum was completely destroyed by fire. Meanwhile, Yuki was waiting for their answer, but then she saw a fire in the direction of the ghetto. Yuki realized that she had been trapped, so she quickly defeated the police chief and others who were guarding her. By the time Yuki got back to the slum, it was too late. The slum was already scorched to the ground. Yuki tried to find survivors. She eventually found Sam in the gutter. By now, Sam was dying. Jack and the others thought they had nothing to worry about and went to the temple to pay their respects. But they were blocked by Yuki and Sam. Today the two of them will make Jack and the others pay for everything, even if they die here. They killed Jack after a hard fight, but Sam is also wounded and has the mysterious virus on his body. Sam asked Yuki to let him feel at peace home. Yuki looked at the scene and felt a little bit of confusion and emptiness. But Yuki did not hesitate to use a knife to send Sam to another world. Then Yuki also put down the knife and began to face another confused future. The title of the film is Lady Snowblood, Love Song of Vengeance. Although the film focuses on Yuki's revenge, but it's more about using Yuki to represent the millions of bitter underclass people. Yuki doesn't know anything about national issues and class struggle. All she wants is the most ordinary justice. In that turbulent era, the elites used the common people to climb to the top and use national justice to deprive the poor of their right to resist. Yuki represents the majority of people who were hurt in the name of reform in the year of innovation. Her face is pale and a kimono, and she seems to be a ghost from the old times. In a world dominated by firearms, she defends the morality of the old world with the weapons of the old world. Her cold eyes seem to tell the unscrupulous elites. The people they hurt will eventually return with resentment to take revenge and use blood and sword to take back everything they have.